Welcome to Play by Play Podcast, your passport to untold stories of the beautiful game. My name is Patrick Bergman. And my name is Ahmed Ehrim. This is where we're going to tell you about all the untold stories of the beautiful game inside the football and outside the football plays abroad and within the UK, within the game and outside the game, including business. We are not professional. Amateur behavior. Invisible. So, Ahmed, let me ask you what you think about this statement. The quality of refereeing in lower leagues is significantly poorer, affecting the quality of the game. Yes and no. Because, yes, the quality is poorer because obviously there's less funding, there's less. Um, training to make these referees better etc etc and some of these referees are just not fit enough to get themselves in position so some non-league referees the fact you know what i mean they can't get them on the pitch to make sure they're in the right position to get the right view i get that to a certain extent but don't you think it's affecting both teams so it's an even it's an even ground for both teams do you know what i mean I would say it depends on what kind of player you are and what referee is refereeing your game. Because if you're the technical guy and if you have uh, the referee that has watched too much Premier League, bro, they, they might just kick you, kick you, elbow you, and the referee will just be blind for that. He'll be, play on, play on. And then it's the yeah. opposite. The guy that anytime you put your finger on the opponent, foul, yellow card as well. Yeah, that's true. Well, I agree with that because that happened to me yesterday, bro. I got hit so many times and the referee was like, play on, play on. I, even the manager was like, oh, what's he on? Um, I agree with you, but it's one of them ones where it'll affect, obviously it affects certain type of players, but I think everyone's got an even playing ground. That's my opinion. Um. And you can't really control that, to be honest. So I don't really like to focus on things I can't control. Do you know what I mean? Like, obviously, just the same way, you can say the same thing, say in grass pitches, like horrible pitches, affect the play. Mm. But that's even in, like, championship. Like, for example, if we go Stoke City, their grass is longer than, than most uh, grass pitches and uh, other championship teams. So... In reality, it's going to affect everyone. You just got to learn how to adapt your game. It's the same thing where it, the pitch is muddy or the pitch is bubbly or the gas is long. You need to, you can't rely on your um, same playing style because you need to adjust a little bit to w- make sure it works in your favour. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's true. That's true. And also... The type of referee you come come across should affect your playing style as well. If you see that this guy is just uh, whistling on everything, you need to be smart. You need to understand that, okay, this guy is clueless. I need to be a bit more careful with these challenges. Or to use it mm-hmm. to my advantage that I will be the one that will be, ah, ah. Mm-hmm. And the, the worst thing you can do is to have referee against you. So, like, exactly. you want to... It's better to be his friend than his enemy. Much better. Yeah. 100%. That's why I was the, my favourite statement to be like, come on, ref. Just think about it. Like, you're better than that. Come on, come on. And I just walk away. And he's like, mm. I'm like, come on, ref. Come on. Come on. I, I don't have to tell you again. Come on, ref. Bro. I, I, you're better than that. You're one of the best refs I've had. Are you off today? Are you all right? <laughs> well, I I play with his mind, but all the time. So, <laughs> and he'd be like, oh, what do you mean? I'm like, come on, I think about it, think about it. And I walk away. <laughs> and I'm like, ref, what's your job? And he'd be like, what do you mean? Like, protect the players. To protect the players. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've given them a warning. And I'm like, come on, yeah, but not again. Okay? Think about it, ref. Come on, ref. I say that all the time, but and it works. It should work, to be honest. Smart play. You have to be be his friend rather than because then they they once he's made the decision, you, you can't change it. Do you know what I mean? Mm. So that's my advice to players. Um, 
my turn. My statement is very controversial, right? Because I've had enough, honestly. Right? I think in non-league, especially in non-league, there should be a cap of how many loan players should come in from academy or from like um from or from like higher tiers. I think there should be a cap in order to facilitate grassroots players. Cause I don't think it's fair because most non-league teams use these loan players as a means of not to pay them because they're getting they're already getting paid by them um, mother club or they're using it as a means of like to get better players or as a means of like um to manage their budget a little bit better. So that means the manager can take more money at home. So that means the when you don't get to play, you don't get to get paid and stuff like that, which I don't find fair because these players, especially in non-league, they don't most of the time they don't sign a full season loan. They sign two one month loan deal, two month loan deal, three month loan deal, which is pathetic really. Because they want to use these players as a means to get them out of the trouble or whatever. Which I understand. But how about you as a manager take some accountability um, and recruit better players. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, um, what's the point? Your total signings being 30 players and then, like, 15 players have left. Do you know what I mean? Like, it doesn't make sense. And then you're having to cover all the players on loan plays. I don't understand that, like, and I understand you want to maintain a relationship with this pro club, for example, um, let's say, for example, Bamber Bridge and Preston North End, because Bamber Bridge and Preston, they're literally next to each other. They play against each other every pre-season. So they want to maintain that relationship. So if Preston have like a 17-year-old lad, 18, 19, 20, sometimes 21, want to get them online to get men's football, they send about like, five, six players within the season. What the hell? Do you know what I mean? And then on top of that, they've got players from um from the which is another statement from that high league coming down and they're signing them mid season. Like in the middle of like October or something. Or in the mid because they got released or um they're coming back from an injury and stuff like that. And it leaves the grassroots players or upcoming players. Uh, what do I do here? Do you know what I mean? And the worst thing is, them grassroots players end up leaving. And then the loan players, after two, three months, leave as well. Because they end of the contract, um, loan contract, and they get called back uh, back up to the main team. And then they wonder, they wonder why there's less grassroots football upcoming grassroots footballers there's less people coming from a uh, from a small town that's why less less and less players are playing the game because there's so much corruption in the system there's not nothing to facilitate um, grassroots football yes so my take on that is uh, me myself in the countries I played uh, it wasn't anything like I have experienced in England with the loans all the time that you can get loaned for one week for what even one week yeah can you get loaned for one mm. week bro this is just just ridiculous like uh, can you get loaned for one day as well for a game yeah i've heard it before uh, this is ridiculous bro this this i have never experienced this before and also in countries like norway or poland maybe it's like five or ten loan players per league you get mm. me? Clubs are not uh, not using the, the loan uh, system. It's like they, they just rather to sign somebody for one year. At least you know that you, you have this player and they focus uh, more on the recruitment, as you said. But they try to recruit the player in the best way possible to know that for this one year he will be providing value. Why is it happening in the UK? Uh, I think it's because of the second teams this under 23s or, or something uh, the uh, are playing in this premier league too so like all of the second teams in the in in, in english leagues are having their own leagues 
And like if you look at Poland, Norway, Germany, France, blah, 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 all of the second teams of the Premier League teams play in the leagues, in the men's league. So they don't need to loan the players out. Mm. But in fact, in in uh, in UK, you you don't have this luxury to 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 participate uh, against men's football. So that's why they are loaning loaning them like crazy. Mm. That's a very interesting point because obviously, like in Poland, we've got Warsaw one, Warsaw two, um, even in, um, in Latvia, you've got like um. Like Riga one, Riga two. There's so many. Like it's even it, even, even looks. Even... Spain is even Real Madrid, Castilla, bros. Third division in Spain. And Barcelona B. So yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's everywhere. Yeah, it's not done in England or France or Germany for some reason. Um, which I don't understand why. Which which I think like, yeah. I understand the need for it in England because there's no big teams. Put a cap to it. Do you know what I mean? Like spread it out for the players that you think he's not quite there, he's skinny, he hasn't grown. Send him to a lower, lower tier for the players that are like very good, just needs that extra. Send them to the... Don't send like six players across the, from League 1 League 2 per team and step three. Having like five, six lone players per team within a season, not at the same time, but within a season, do you know what I mean? Mm. Which I find bizarre because you're at an unfair disadvantage because they're, they're coming from a full time environment and then they're already trained in the morning, they're already getting all the facilities they need in the morning, and then they come train in the evening as well. Mm. And you're like, so, they, so so Tuesday and Thursday they have double team session team tra- team training session one with the under twenty three slash first team and one with the non league team on a Tuesday same thing on a Thursday and then the train Monday Wednesday Friday morning as well. How you meant to people? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And they're like <laughs> and they're like oh yeah the you just need to do better do 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 that. Of course you can do your individual training in your gym blah 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 but. That's only gonna cover you so much. It's, there's nothing compared to team training or team environment training. Nothing. Um. So that's so, my opinion. I think there should be a cap. Yeah, like I think that uh, if you look at this from a way that they are in the system, it's hard to get into the system. But once you're in the system, the system protects you. So like it's very hard to get in. But once you're in. The system and all the rules, all the people around you, they will be working for you, securing you and uh, making sure that you get the advantage from being in the system. 100% because like in England, they have the PFA, which is basically Players um, Football Association. It's like a welfare so if you get injured while you're on a contract, they'll give you free medic um medical care and um, they'll fund for your surgery, blah blah blah. And that's even as a, an academy, sixteen year old, eighteen year old, you'll still get protected. And even if say something happens to you and you need to retire, they'll give you funds to go university, blah blah blah, whatever. Whereas in a non league, because you're on non contract, <laughs> the club might look after you for four or five weeks, maybe, and then they'll be like. See you later. You sort yourself out. So I mean, maybe if the club is nice, they'll set up a GoFundMe, uh, do fundraising, blah blah blah. If the club is nice and they like you, do you know what I mean? And you've mm. been there for a long time, right? But most clubs don't okay. care. It's a dog fight. If I was in a situation of a non-league player trying to, to get the playtime, I would look for it abroad because as I said the, the system is uh, it's not rigged but it's made for the players within the system to succeed like mm. that's how it is and uh, <laughs> if you woke up quote unquote woke up too late with uh, with uh, your development you, you, you just missed out you need to find a solution 
And there are solutions, um, of course. Of course, but like, we, don't, let's not go too far. We have a friend, but um, I'm not going to say his name, but like, we have a friend, right, um, where he's been playing abroad, blah, 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 came back in England, played for Atkinson Stanley on trial against Blackburn Championship team, right? And he ripped the centre back apart, right? All game, right? And that and that and that midfielder that was on loan, uh, now plays for Crystal Palace, and now he's the next big thing. I'm not gonna mention his name, right? But he's a young kid, and he's he's the next big thing, right? But that game, like, he ripped him apart like ripped him apart and i've still got the video but i was like oh, no way won the penalty i think don't know what they said oh thank you so much you're a good player but um you don't have like um league one league two experience you just signed a player that got released from championship um thank you so much i know that you've been here for four or five weeks on trial blah blah, blah. you've scored some goals you've won us some pens you've got some assist on the Thing the fans love you, blah blah blah. But you just got relegated, so we need to get back into League One. So, um, we don't want to take a risk. Or, yeah, thanks. Same thing happened to my other mate, right? National League player, not team, team of the season, and um, won so many awards for about players, players a season for a national league, blah blah blah, whatever. Goes on trial. Because he used to play in a Premier League club, but obviously fell down. Goes on trial for the championship team because he's been getting, um, um, he got scouted. Goes there for four weeks, but that's what they say. Same thing. Oh, yeah, we just got a player that came down from the Premier League. Yeah, thanks for everything. We've done amazing, but we don't want to take risk. Do you know what I mean? And if that's happened, <clears throat> if that's happening at the top level. What do you think is happening in the league? Times 10. Mm-hmm. It's rigged, bro. And like, sometimes it's not about performance. Sometimes it's about, obviously, nowadays, marketing, clout, social media following, to do, do, do look at everything else. And that's the reality of it. As we said, uh, if you're in the situation like that, you need to find solutions. If you want to be a football player, you will always find a solution. Mm. If you like to play football, maybe you are okay with being pushed around. That's what I mean. Um, they say get experience, but when, when you're trying to get experience, they use someone else. Same in job like, market. Oh. It's the same thing. They'd be like, yeah, we want someone with five years experience, blah, blah, blah. I'm, not, I'm 18. Like, I'm just... <laughs> I just came out of the room not long ago, do you know what I mean? We need someone with 10 years experience. That makes sense. Um, but that's just the way that the market, the market's crazy at the moment. My second statement, and then we'll go back to you, um, is I think just like, which I don't understand to be fair, just like there's a transfer market and a transfer embargo, not an embargo, transfer um deadline and stuff like that in non-league there's only one transfer deadline which is basically three four weeks before the season finishes which is stupid to be honest right um, <laughs> but any other league there's a summer transfer and a winter transfer I think there should be that in non-league though because the amount of times we I don't know, um, you do well, blah, 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 and then they realise somebody is available for the loan from, I don't know, championship team or somebody um, got released, whatever, a terminated his contract at National League and wants to be closer to home, blah, blah, blah. I think it's only fair for the lads that have been there from the summer to be there until at least January. What's this of them signing hella hella like players big players in the middle of like October or something I, I don't I don't understand it and I don't think it's fair because say for example say certain 
obviously I'm not going to list the name of the clubs. The certain clubs in step three, they bought like 50 players in one season or something like that because they have a rich owner and then as soon as they see their arrival, the, the players are in second place or third place uh, in the team in the team league, right? They're in first, they go, ooh, they're coming after us, ooh, let me buy six of their best players. No way. <laughs> Bro, it don't make sense. It makes the league unfair because they've got money. they be like, oh, how much? What's he on? £200 a week? I'm going to give him £700 a week. He can't turn that down, bro. That's life-changing money for him. He can put money, uh, food in the table, blah, blah, blah. Take his kids to holidays and stuff like that. Do you know what I mean? For them, for them, as especially when they're not, their ambition is just to play football as a side hobby, as a side hustle, rather than progress up. For them, they're like, think of what? I'm getting £500 more per week, which is 2000 per month. I can invest in a business, bro. I'm taking it. Bro, and can you get can you loan a player from the same league? Yeah. That doesn't have no, sense, bro. Bro, just let me say something, okay? Imagine you play first place in the league, plays the second place in the league. Just before the game, they loan six players from the Well, that's what that's what I'm saying. It don't make sense because that the whole league is rigged. Yo. It's fully rigged, right? It don't make sense. From an insider in the UK to be like, oh, it's always been like that. It makes sense. I promise you, once you step your foot abroad or see how it is in every other country, you'll be like, yo, UK is messed up. Now, why is it like the way it is? And then they wonder why they wonder or um, why the league is unfair or why it's the same teams competing for the playoff or getting first or second, blah, blah, blah. It don't, for me, it don't make sense. It really does not make sense. I think there should be a cap of non-players and there should be a cap of who can, um, a cap of uh, when you can transfer players. Summer and winter, that's it. Just like any, any other leagues, uh, and even the semi-pro leagues in other countries, it's the same thing. So I don't understand why there's no cap. And that's how you're going to facilitate grassroots football, really and truly. Um, like, get on this, bro. Do you know Marcus Hill? Because mm. mm. obviously Robbie Savage, is, uh, he's got the money, blah, blah, blah. He's got BT Sport coverage, whatever, yeah? At one point, do you know Papa Cissé? That scored the wonder goal against yeah, Chelsea. The, yeah, the yeah, yeah. Bro, he was he trained with them. He gave him money to train with them, bro. Omar Cissé plays for Everton two years ago. Bro, he signed him. Put him on like five thousand a week or something like that. Something crazy, bro. Because he was playing for Everton um two years ago, two three years ago. Omar Niasse or something like that. Niasse or Cissé, something like that, bro. Head's gone. And bro, imagine you're like, man, I've been here for a minute and you're signing ex Premier League players just for clout and revenue or whatever. It's crazy, bro. I know it's mad. The guy left within a few months. <laughs> he collected his paycheck and left, bro. For me, it don't make sense. The whole system don't make sense. It's fully big. It is what it is, isn't it? Nah, it's like uh, nowhere in the world you will see anything like in in the UK. Yeah. Not even the UK, it's just England, to be honest, that it's clapped. Like Scotland, yeah. Isle, yeah. Scotland, uh, Wales, you, you just have no normal system in it. I know Wales, I'm not yeah. sure. I know Wales and Ireland do. They have a transfer market. Because they're on they're on transfer market and they have a transfer system both summer and winter. I know that Northern Ireland, Ireland and Wales, and even Wales second tier, it's the same thing. For some reason, England's got is like a special rules and regulations that don't make sense. Like, and I'm not sure about Scotland, but um, maybe somebody in the comments can correct us. I'm not sure. 
I have a tip to people is that before you even join the club, you need to look at the probability if you will play or not. Mm. Like if you see that the team is having 18 players in the squad and the season is starting now, you will get your playtime. But if you go to a team where it's like 27 players and uh, as you said, they are loaning five, six players a week and uh, it's just all over, just don't even go there. It's just a waste mm. of time. Like I understand that sometimes the manager can uh, can talk to you that uh, you will get your chance, just continue working hard. But bro, just look, do the maths. If mm. you're the sixth choice, what you're doing there? Just mm. just go Good to time. a lower league team where you will play or go abroad. That, that's what I say to people, but they're like, oh no, 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 this club is Macclesfield. Do, 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 do. Oh, big man team, you're not gonna play. Let me ask you a question. Let's say there is a guy division nine. Division nine, okay. Mm. Last five years he was scoring 20 goals a season. Okay. Mm. He is on trial in six division team, so three leagues mm. higher. Mm. And on trial, there is a guy from League Two that haven't even played a single minute last last season. Who mm. is more likely to sign? The League Two player all day long, Bro. all day long, all day long. Not even question though. You can you can be seventeen as well. The signing in, bro. You can be sixteen. The signing in, bro. All day long, bro. Because you know why? I seen it yesterday, bro. I seen it yesterday. That's just crazy. First year pro player, at least. And guess what happens? They're like, I'm, I spoke to him yesterday. He goes, oh, yeah, he plays well. He goes, oh, I've been getting in a minute too. No, no, he's a first year pro. Got released. I was like, all right, yeah. Oh, so what's happening? Do you think it? And he goes, I've been signed the, pre, uh, the pre-agreement contract. I'm just here to get minutes. I'm thinking, eh? What? You didn't get any minutes last year and you're a young kid. But because you come from a premier team, a lot of, uh, I was sat there thinking, this is so rigged. But because he comes from an established team, big team, blah, blah, blah. Even though he hasn't played any minutes compared to someone that has played like one or two leagues lower, but been playing so many minutes. That guy got signed and the other one didn't start. From what I know, so from what I heard so far. We'll see. And I've seen it so many times. And the guy's only 18. I know, I know, I know. I'm sorry for breaking the podcast. Just one announcement, okay? Check out our channels on Instagram, on TikTok, on Facebook, Play by Play Podcast. Before I signed for the non-league team, I was doing a research of the center backs there. And uh, there was particularly one guy that I was like, uh, I'm not sure if I can get playtime because this guy was in uh, Manchester City Academy. Mm. and uh, what uh, what was positive for me is that it was that he played uh, in the academy like four or five years ago and then I could mm. see the pattern that he was going lower, lower, lower and do you think that the player that is coming from uh, from the academy, from a professional academy to non-league he has a certain time to prove himself or he can just ride on the on the name all career like even even if he's thirty, will play will people still be saying that uh, that this is the guy from Manchester City Academy, past the Engl- England uh, captain, under twelves. Under twelve. Under twelve. And what I would say to a certain extent, to a certain extent, you can mind that to a certain extent, only for so long, maybe four, mm. five, six years. And maybe we represented the Man City twenty threes, made it on the bench on the first team, whatever, to a certain extent. And then they kind of top it up again if you make certain appearances. Uh, well, let's say Norway Premier League team, still on the bench, we're making maybe five appearances off the bench. They top it up again. Mm-hmm. They top it up again, and they just 
I've seen players divided out all their career like that, bro. I've seen a few. Not a few. I've seen like like at least 10, 20 players like that in my whole life so far. There's a guy who in total played about I kid you not, like 50 appearances and he's 35 and he's still playing. But the manager likes him because he's a good training player. Make it make sense, though. It don't make sense. It's like that's like four appearances a season or something like that, bro. <laughs> but he's got, he's got bro, and he's making a living, bro. He's made a living, bro. And he's only as he's, he's, I think this year he's retiring. I'm not sure, but. He's made a living. Every time, like my mate speaks to him, he goes, "I'll be honest, I got, I got lucky with life. I don't know how I was a professional footballer. It's crazy, bro. But it happens, bro. You see, because you see managers when they get sacked, they take their same players to where they gone, and then they take them again, and then yeah. take them again, and then when they get sacked." They meet with the manager to be like, oh yeah, he's not bad. And then that manager takes him somewhere in that merry go round in the roller coaster. And the next minute he's like, oh, I haven't really been playing much. Uh, international break, oh, time off, going on a holiday. Oh, sorry. Uh, oh, wow, I'm 35 now. Oh, oh, collected so much money. Oh, sorry. Yeah, call it a day. It's crazy, bro. Honestly, I find it so bizarre. Like, the whole system. The one thing I've realized about football, sometimes it's not about your ability. Sometimes it's all about relationship and relations between the people who are in power and who are in the system. If you have a good relationship and relations between that, you're good to go. Honestly. You actually reminded me on one of one player that uh that was in my team when I was in England. Maybe you you know his name, but uh, I don't remember. But this guy, he played for Liverpool for the first team. Like he was on pro, some preseason or something, and you could I could see the the picture with him in Liverpool shirt in like two hundred forty pixels from two thousand five. Mm. Bro, twenty nineteen, he was still riding it. People were ah, oh, this is the past Liverpool player. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he played with Steven Gerrard. <laughs> I don't know. I don't remember his name, but it was uh, it was some guy that was from Liverpool, and he, he was just writing this this name all all his career. I know, bro. I know a few, bro. Like not playing like step four, step three, step five. I've been mad in it. Obviously, that's life. But when it comes to the pitch, you know, like, yeah, I see why he didn't make it. But not because he's got a name and he's on Wikipedia and whatever. Mm-hmm. It makes it valid that he's a good player. Some Somehow. But it is what it is, isn't it? That's life. Life is big. Some people get a head start, some people don't. They really well, aren't bad enough. The transfer market value, bro. This is the most ridiculous thing I have ever heard. You get scouted to a team based on your transfer market value. And this value is coming up automatically. So like even if you cannot even play football and you you are in the squad of a Premier League team in, uh, let's say, Luxembourg, you will still get your value. And the player that has been playing six seasons from 18 to 24, doing his best, having his highlight videos, but he was not uh, not getting the stats. Even if he was getting the stats, he did not have the transfer market value because he's playing in the uh, league, I don't know, uh, third division, second division in uh, Litva yeah. or, or, some, uh, or some Serbia. And bro, these guys is not getting anywhere because he doesn't have automatic value on transfer market. Yeah. So it's like like nah. blue. It's like blue check on Instagram. To be honest, 
Yeah, it is like that, which is a bit messed up. And sometimes you can have people who are in the game or in the system that can put you on a transfer market and give you that blue tick and make sure you're a verified player or whatever. And it's a bit messed up because sometimes I pay a player in Conference North or Conference South or certain National League players, they'll have the same market value as, a, I don't know, let's say, a, let's say Gibraltar Prem, which makes no sense to me. Mm. That is bizarre to me because there's National League players getting scoured into League 1, League 2 every year, bro. And they're getting sold like like half a million, like three quarter of a million, do you know what I mean? And you're telling me the market value is 50k? Shut up. Just shut up. Do you know what I mean? Someone can get 50k market value and well second tier, bro. And tell me it's the same comparison as National League or Conference North, Conference South. Get lost, bro. But that's what the the, the scouts and this uh, and the clubs and the system abroad look for. Wow, that was an episode. If you want to see more, check out this one.